Hello friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. So I wanted to do a palette bingo today with my Jaclyn Hill palettes, but I also wanted to do a get ready with me. So we're doing both. I've done this before and it went over well, so here we are again. I have exactly like an hour and a half until I have to leave and go back to work. So this is what we're gonna do. <laughs> I obviously I don't really know what look we're doing because it's a palette bingo, but as far as my face makeup goes, I'm gonna do pretty much what I've been doing lately but also using a couple other things that are probably excessive. But I'm just gonna prime my face like normal. In my unpopular opinions video, that video actually went up today. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. It's really funny. Annette and I did it as a collaboration reacting to your unpopular opinions. And a lot of people said that they don't like primers and stuff like that, which I agree with. I use primers for the sheer purpose of just adding glow to my skin. I don't use them as the purpose of like an actual primer. So I use the e.l.f. Prep and Hydrate Balm. And then I use this concoction that my friend Anya gave me, which is the e.l.f. Luminous Matte Primer and the Wake and Bake Oil. And they just add a nice glow to my skin. What are you guys up to? I would love to know. Today is Thursday, the 16th. I worked this morning, have literally just this little break and then I go back to work for a few hours and then I go to the gym tonight. It's a normal busy day. But speaking about primers, it made me want to use one of my actual primers that I used to use and now I want to use it again to see if I feel like it makes a difference. It's the Urban Decay Optical Illusion. It's about like halfway gone so I kind of want to just use it because it's here. So why not? I used to like this but does it make a difference? Who knows? And nobody needs this much skin prep before putting on makeup. Honestly, just a moisturizer will be fine, but I'm experimenting a little bit. For foundation, I've been revisiting my old It Cosmetics CC Illuminating Cream kind of thing. And I really do like this. However, the fair shade is a bit too dark for my skin. It's like one shade too dark. So I take some of the white ColourPop concealer and just kind of dot it around because it mixed with the foundation makes it more so my shade. This is excessive and totally unnecessary, but since I already have both products, I'm just making it work, you know? I just do about one pump because I don't like to go too full coverage with anything. But do you see, like, on its own, that color is just not my color. So I have to kind of make a concoction with it to make it work. We officially have plans to see Detective Pikachu on Saturday. I'm so excited. And then on Sunday, I'm hanging out with Mackenzie all day because she's about to leave for Africa again on Thursday. I'm sad that she's leaving again for three months, but she's excited, so I'm excited for her. But I'm also sad because that means no more wine and puzzle nights. I need a new wine and puzzle friend to replace her. I think my Wet n Wild video is going up right before this one. So with that being said, my eye is still a little bit red because it's the next day after filming. I feel like it's because I accidentally wore my contacts a little past their like expiration date. I have 30 day contacts and it was like day 34 when I threw them away. I just didn't realize I went over. So I think that's why it's red because I Googled why do I have one red eye? And Google informed me that it's probably because I wore my contacts too long and I was like, yeah, you know what? You're probably right. For concealer, I realized I have one of the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eyes and I'd totally forgotten about it. This is in the shade Light. Pretty sure I got this in like a boxy charm. This is insanely full coverage. It's so thick. Gotta cover this guy up because he's not cute. This is such a thick concealer. I kind of hate that I have to... I mean, obviously you could use a brush. You don't have to use your finger. I kind of hate that I have to use my finger. I wish it was just on a doe foot applicator. This concealer I feel like would be a game changer if it came out on a doe foot applicator. And now I still have some on my finger. It's crazy. I'm just gonna wipe it on my sponge. Hope we can get this covered. Helped a little bit. It's gonna peek through because it's just a brutal, brutal old zit because I kept picking at it. I'm such a face picker. It's ridiculous. It's like I get a zit and instead of just like simply popping it with my extraction tool and then leaving it alone, I have to just continuously pick at it with my fingers, dig all in there. And then it turns into a scabby mess. I don't know why I will never learn. I do like this concealer though. It covers really nicely. You guys know I'm not a huge full coverage person, but once in a while I think it's okay. I'm just putting a little bit more on the sides of my nose because my glasses leave a mark. Now taking my Milk Makeup Bronzing Stick. That's still the only thing I've been using for bronzer lately. I just think it's such a nice, such a nice thing. Pop it kind of all over the tip of my nose and across my, under my cheekbone area and just kind of blend it out. 
I haven't been using powder bronzer at all the past probably two or three weeks. And honestly, it's been fine. This gives enough definition that I don't have to waste time putting powder bronzer on. And I love, I love bronzer. I've just been lazy and experimenting with different techniques, kind of just trying to embrace cream products a little bit more. Who am I? I don't even know. And now taking my Glossier Cloud Paint in Beam, because I'm still obsessed with this. I just pop a little bit on my nose. Pop the rest of it on my cheeks. Just kind of pat it around. And then leave it just like that, you're done. I like to put a little of the leftover on my finger on my chin. I love this product. I was so scared of it for the longest time and now I don't go a day without using this. I just think it's so pretty. It blends out like a dream. I've actually worn this on a couple days where I don't wear any makeup, which is not often. I wear makeup pretty much every day because I film so often I don't really have a choice. But I've actually popped this on on days when I don't really have time to wear anything. And it looked really pretty on just like my bare skin. I loved it. I need this in more colors so bad. I literally want all the colors. But I need more of a pinky one because this one's very orangey peach, which I love. But I want more of a pinky one also. Ooh, this concealer crease is so bad because it's so thick. So really quick before I powder, I want to experiment again. I'm obsessed with that Wet n Wild highlight from the Crystal Cavern collection. It's in the shade Crystal High. I'm gonna take just a little bit of it on the tip of my beauty sponge while my face is still unset. And I wanna press some of it onto the top of my cheekbone before I set it. And then I might go in with some powder highlight after. I know it's excessive. You don't have to do this. I'm just playing around today. Honestly, this look is so pretty. I would totally just set right underneath my eyes and leave it alone because I love how just dewy and soft the skin looks. It looks so pretty, but I'm not that kind of person. I don't know if I said I was gonna use my Cover FX powder, but I changed my mind. I've been revisiting this Pop Beauty Setting 101 powder palette and I've been kind of mixing the banana and the translucent shade to kind of set my face with. I forgot I even had this palette and I really like the powders in it, so it's amazing. I just realized I'm buffing out my creases with that highlight sponge, whatever. If I have a shiny under eye, I have a shiny under eye. Let me live my life. What do you guys want to talk about? I don't know if I really have anything to talk about. I mean, America's falling apart right now, that's one thing, <laughs> but I'm not gonna delve into a political discussion because that's scary. I don't need anyone coming after me. I need to put on blush now. Is there a blush in one of these Jaclyn Hill palettes I can use? Maybe. Lolly could be cute as a blush. Should I try it? I'm gonna try it. We'll see what happens. I always like to start on my nose first because easier to kind of fix the nose if it goes wrong. Oh, I think that's cute, actually. I think that's quite nice. With the leftover, there's not much on the brush now. I'm just going to kind of tap it across the bridge of the nose a little bit because I am going to do faux freckles because somebody requested that I do my faux freckles in a get ready with me so you guys could see how I do it. So I like to have a little bit of a kind of blushy color across my nose because that just makes it look more... Again, I'm not trying to make it look like I actually have freckles because I don't care if they look fake. I like the look of fake freckles, but I like having a little bit of a pinky hue across my nose. And I'm only dipping into that shadow very lightly. I'm really not going too hard. Honestly, I don't know how much I like the shadow for blush. I really should not critique shadows as blushes because it's not what they're meant to be. I've just grown so used to using them as a blush. It's okay. I might go in with something else on top of it though. I would be the person that felt the need to use like three or four different blushes in one sitting. Yeah, there isn't really a good blush shade in any of these palettes, so I'm mad. <laughs> I'll just dip into my Strictly Chic blush from NYX. Just to add a little bit more of something onto the cheeks. Now I am gonna use powder highlight, but I like to do my faux freckles first and then powder highlight after so that something can kind of go over them. And really I've done it too where I put my blush on after. I just, I just switch it up day to day, honestly. So for my faux freckles, I've been using the Sepia Liquid Lip from Anastasia. Really any cool tone brown shade will work. You could use something warm tone too. It just depends on what your preference is. I like this kind of color for mine. And I have this teeny tiny little pointed brush from Sigma. It's the E05. I don't know where I got it. I think I got it for free in a gift bag at the hair show years ago. But it works great for this because it's so small and precise. So I just put some on the brush. 
and I just start doing really small light dots just kind of sporadic. I always start at my nose and work my way over. I like them to be in my eye bag zone, a little bit across the cheek. I've gotten really ham where I put them pretty much all over the face, but I also like to do it where it's just focused on the nose and top of the cheeks. I like both. And if you don't like faux freckles, then just skip this part of the video. It's fine. Don't hate. I think they're cute. And they always look a little wild when I'm first doing them. But then you press them in and it looks really cute. So they soften up a lot when you put like your sponge over it and stuff. So don't judge them too hard in the beginning. Like I would never just stop here and leave it like this because this is just a little too... Like I just poke dots on my face looking for me. I take my finger now and I just press and I actually switch fingers each time because sometimes if you like you'll get little dots of that liquid lipstick on your finger. I might have just moved you, sorry. And then I wipe them off and go at it again and just repeat until I've kind of pressed each of the areas. And then afterwards I'll go in with my sponge and press over everything. So that's what I'm going to do now. Just pressing over everything. And it already helps to start soften things. And then I'm actually going to take that powder brush. There's no product on this anymore. I mean, there's just leftover. And I like to just kind of lightly press over top of that area. I'm not sweeping. I'm just pressing. And same with that blush brush. No additional product. I'm just very lightly kind of tapping over everything. And doing this just kind of makes it start to look like they're underneath the skin rather than on top. But again, I'm not here trying to fool anybody. I don't care if they look totally real or not. I'm going to take that Apocalyptic Beauty highlighter that I've been obsessed with. This is in the shade Polished Bone. And you can use my code BUTBEAN if you want to save 15%. It's just such a pretty, shiny, white highlight for all of my tip of the nose highlight haters out there. I feel like I did so many unnecessary steps in this makeup routine, but you know what? It's fine. I'm just having fun. Sometimes I just want to put extra makeup on just because it's fun. And then I like to just tap over everything yet again, just to mesh everything together. And that's pretty much where we're at. It just makes them a lot softer, more underneath the skin looking. They aren't too out there in my opinion. You might disagree, but I like the way they look. It's cute, and that's how I do it. I'm, it's not anything too crazy. You can do less, you could do more, but that's basically how I do it. I like to do most of my powders, then my faux freckles, and then kind of press powders over top, just so it looks nice and subtle. And now my face is itchy. There's always cat hairs everywhere. I've been loving this Wet n Wild face mist still. It's the Aura Booster, is how it's described. Just smells really good and it leaves my skin feeling very good so I guess that's it let's do the drawing for the Jaclyn palettes so we have the OG one right here so many shadows I used to use this like crazy it's so dirty do you see that like my black blew up basically it didn't actually but it looks like it did so I'm gonna draw one out of each palette I have that one there and then I have the four vault ones here so let's see what we get. I'm going into this expecting to do a very neutral look because there are so many neutral shadows in each of these palettes. So I'm not expecting anything colorful. I think this is going to be a very neutral look. But now that I say that, I'm going to be surprised. So in the original Jaclyn palette, we got number nine. Yep, we got this one, which I think is called, what are you called? Pooter? Butter. This one's butter. So we got a transition shade. How delightful. And then for the other palettes, I just have them in alphabetical order because I'm a maniac. And each of these just have 10. So for the Armed and Gorgeous palette, we got number 10. Okay. Ooh, this one's pretty though. We got Classified. It's like a pretty bronzy color. I mean, it's very neutral, but it's a pretty shade. It's just reflective-ish. It's not the prettiest shade, but it's a pretty shade. For the Bling Boss palette, we got number three. Ooh, we got a color. We got gem. We got one of the brightest colors out of all of these, so that's cool. Okay, this might not be so bad, but I'm still gonna keep my mind around the fact that this is gonna be my only pop of color. For the Dark Magic palette, we got number nine. We got the shade Mood. I mean, that's okay because it's gonna be a good deepening shade. So honestly, if I get another shimmer, I won't be that upset because I feel like I have a good transition shade and then I have a deepening shade so I can make things work. And now with the Ring the Alarm palette, we got number 10 again. So we got Secret, which is probably not necessary to have in this, but now we have kind of an in-between shade. 
I feel like I feel like the look I'm gonna do is going to be pretty predictable. But you know what, it's okay. It's gonna be a pretty look, it'll be cute, it's gonna be cohesive, like I got really lucky with this, so I guess I'll just zoom you in now. I'm gonna prime my eyes with my Smashbox Lid Primer in light as usual, and I'm not gonna set it because I don't do that, and we'll get going. So I think first I'm gonna dip into Mood, which is in the Dark Magic palette, and I'm just taking that on a little brush, and I'm gonna start working on just kind of putting that directly in the lower crease. What you think? I'm gonna do a very blown out, smoky crease situation. And I think I'm gonna do a cut crease. Because I actually haven't really done cut, a cut crease in a little while. Like it's probably been a week, so. I wanna do one. I'm one of the people that didn't have a problem with the Jaclyn Hill Vault collection. I thought it was fine. I thought the quality was good. I thought it was the same as the original Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette, if not a little better, if I'm being honest with you. But I don't know, I didn't have a problem. I would honestly love to try someone's palette that they claimed was bad and compare it to mine, cause I don't know. And I bought mine directly from the Morphe site. I'm pretty sure I got it on launch day. So I don't know, man, I don't know. I was nothing short of impressed. I mean, now these aren't my favorite shadows ever just because I like other brands' shadows better. And like the Morphe 35M, that palette is superior to all Morphe shadows in my mind. It's such a good one. However, this palette was not bad for me. None of them were. Even the Armed and Gorgeous, and I think that was the most hated one, I loved that one. Let's leave it just like this. So now I'm gonna dip into Secret from the Ring the Alarm. It's that middle one. It's the one on this part of my hand. I'm just taking that on a bigger blending brush and I'm just gonna start blending kind of right on top of and right above that shade just to start blending things out. And I think I'm going to kind of start working on winging this out just a tad little bit. So I like me a good elongated eye. If I have time, I might even do a winged liner with this look because I've had a couple people like comment that I haven't done a wing in a while. And I feel like you guys are doubting my winged liner abilities. <laughs> I've just been lazy. Haven't felt like doing it. See, I feel like everything's blending good. I don't have any weird patchiness or anything and I'm not putting in that much effort. I don't know, these shadows just work for me. Now I'm gonna take that butter shade from the OG palette, which is the transition color. I don't think transition shades are necessarily necessary. Like I could make this work without this. Like I would just take a clean brush now and start blending. But since this one's here, I'm just going to blend kind of right above everything. I still have an hour until I need to leave. I'm doing so good on time. My face makeup really does not take me very long. I don't spend a ton of time. I just kind of get it done. Like I can get my actual face routine part done in like 15 minutes. It's great. And especially on days when I don't even want to wear foundation. It's so fast. Not that anyone cared about how long this takes me. Actually, in my real life, people ask me, they'll see my makeup, they're like, how long did that take you? Did It must have taken hours. And I mean, I spend some time on it, but I don't feel like I spend that much time. Like this look, beginning to end, will probably end up have taken me 45 minutes to an hour, which is obviously more than some people like to spend, but whatever. I don't know why I'm rambling right now. Just gonna go back with the previous brushes with no additional product just to really start building up this outer corner. Mostly like the second brush. I don't really need to dip into that first brush again, I think. Dip into the first brush, use the first brush. You knew what I meant. Taking my sponge and tapping that outer edge just to make it softer. I've had a couple people tell me that they started doing this technique since you saw me doing it. I'm glad it works for you because it's literally just something I randomly started doing one day. I didn't see anyone else do it. I'm not saying I'm, I invented that or claimed it. But I just started trying it one day and it worked. So here we are. So that's where we're at with that. I think it looks fine. It's browns. It's not exciting, <laughs> but it's fine. I'm gonna take my Makeup Revolution Cut Crease Canvas now and pop some on my lid. And I'm gonna look up so I can see where my eye transfers. And then I have a little brush that I'm going to use to start just carving everything out. And I'm putting some more product on that brush. I feel like for me, I like cut creases because it almost just creates more space for you to play with more shadow and be more creative. I don't know. I just like the look of them. I think they're cool. And I also just love them ever since I learned how to do it. It took me a long 
time for me to figure out how to do this on myself. But once I did, man, I became unstoppable. Oh, really quick, guys. I didn't even say anything in my Wet n Wild video. The Wet n Wild video that I posted came up. Like, that was the first video I filmed after it happened. But thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers. That's insane to me. I started my channel about a little over two years ago. I think last month was two years, sometime in April. And I didn't even think I would be at a thousand by now, truthfully. I didn't think anyone would care to watch me. It blows my mind that you guys like me. It's been blowing my mind recently that you guys like when I talk and chat, which means that you like me for me. And I can't tell you how just amazing that feels. And I just wanted to thank you because you guys have turned this hobby of mine into even more of a passion. I love chatting with you and making videos and just creating art. It's so much fun and I'm so thankful for this little community we're building. So just thank you. I love you all so much. And now we're going to do some more shadow things. Need a new brush though. I'm gonna take gem first, which is that purple. You guys might hear school buses nonstop because it's just that time of day. It is 2.30 in the afternoon. I'm going to place this down and I'm gonna do kind of my double lid situation where it's like two colors blended together. So I'm going to start up here towards the top where that darker shade is beginning to build up. I'm gonna move this palette so I can stop reaching over myself. <sighs> Make life easier, Betty Jean, not harder. And yeah, I'm just gonna start up here and work my way down and it's gonna end kind of where this bottom edge is. So it's just like a diagonal. I, I'm really bad at explaining this little step that I do. I don't know, it's not too precise. I'm just trying to split my lid in half basically, but at a diagonal. Like, you know how when you have a sandwich and you cut it diagonal instead of just straight? That's, that's what I'm doing now. I'm gonna take that little first brush now just to start smudging this area. But it's not too hard to smudge because it's not like I'm trying to blend weird colors together. Now I'm gonna use that same brush. I'm just flipping it over so it's like the cleaner side. And I'm gonna take that classified shade from the Armed and Gorgeous palette and I'm just taking it kind of right on the tip. And I guess I'm just gonna pop this kind of up towards the top of my cut crease. Although I might need a smaller brush for this. I'm just using this teeny tiny little pencil brush and I'm just gonna start just packing it right where that cut crease is. This is a really pretty shade. I really like it next to this purple also. I get really lucky with my palette bingo combinations. The palette bingo gods are usually on my side. It's not too often that I'm totally unhappy with the result. I didn't love my Anastasia bingo. I might have a rematch with it to see if I can get something better. But the fact of the matter is there's so many neutrals in those palettes, I'm not gonna get much better. But for the most part, I get really happy with these palette bingos. They really just get my creative juices flowing. Now I'm just gonna dip back into the purple and just work on smudging the little fusion where they meet so it blends. Cause I don't like this edge to look harsh. I like it to be a nice flow of colors. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm getting quite a bit of fallout. Not a lot, but I'm getting more than I usually do. I don't usually deal with fallout as like a major issue, but these colors are doing it for me. I'm just gonna blend this outer edge just a tad bit more. Why is my hair driving me nuts? I'm so ready to just go bald, guys. You don't even know. I think I'm now just going to highlight my inner corner with that same classified shade because I'm not gonna use anything else. So just popping that kind of in the inner corner. It's kind of cute, actually. So that's where we're at with that. I think it looks pretty, actually. I mean, I didn't doubt myself. It's just nice to see it kind of come together a little bit, you know? I like this look. What do I want in my waterline? I wish I had a vibrant purple this exact color. I have this perpetual purple color from LA Girl. I think I'm just gonna try this out. I like that, it gets the message across. I guess now I'm gonna do the other eye, throw something on my lips, put on my lashes, and we'll finish this up. So this is the final look. What do you think? I love it. I think it's really cute. I went with my NYX Liquid Suede in the shade Amethyst because I was just trying to copy the purple that was on my lids, and I think it looks pretty good. My lashes are the Sugar Pill Plush Lashes, and... That's all I really have to say about it. I like this final look, I think it's cute. I really like purples and golds next to each other, so I just, I like that I got that combo. 
Obviously, this isn't the most exciting palette bingo ever, but it's also not the most boring. I think it was pretty. It was fun just kind of revisiting these shadows because it's been a while since I've played with them. Good news, I'm gonna be playing with the Dark Magic palette for my next three looks, one palette. I'm sure by the time you're seeing this, I will have already pretty much finished filming it if it's not already finished being filmed. So that video is coming probably within a couple days of you seeing this one. So that's really cool. You guys really wanted me to do a three looks, one palette with it, so it's coming and I'm ready for it. What did you guys think of this get ready with me, this look, this palette bingo, all that stuff? Let's chat in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please hop over to my Instagram. It's Beat Bean. Follow me there. I post every single day, and don't forget to subscribe here before you leave. I post at least five days a week, but it's usually six or seven. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.